Welcome to the Dragon House Adventures. Why is it called the Dragon House, you may ask? Well, because here on the corner of 44th and Brandon is a 16 foot tall carved wooden dragon. Next to the dragon, carved out of a tree that grew in that spot, is a naked girl. The dragon is playing with the girl. That's why it's called the Dragon House. Did you say the trees grew in that spot? Yes. Yes, I did. You're a monster. You killed beautiful Spanish elms. I bought the property partly because I loved the Spanish elms. That's actually not what happened. One Saturday morning at about 7 o'clock in the morning, I was awoke, awakened by a phone call. And it went something like this. Hello, is this John Schleck? And I said, yes. He said, I'm the city arborist. Your trees have Dutch elm disease. I will give you one month to take them down. If you do not take them down, I will send a crew out. They will take them down for you and we will charge you. Do you understand what I have said? <gasps> what? So, in retrospect, I understand that the city arborist is probably a guy who really likes trees. But when he calls people and says that they have to cut their trees down, he probably gets called a lot of nasty names. So, he's adopted a relatively brusque persona about trees. The trees were a big part of the reason that I bought this property. They had amazing shade in the afternoon. When I built the retaining wall of this house, I actually put in a little park bench and you can see how it's set back from the street. That was designed to have shade from the trees. I did some research and I found that Dutch elm beetles live in the bark of trees and if you strip the bark off well obviously the tree can't live but the Dutch elm beetles won't hatch out now earlier there's probably about four different three different stories about my thinking about this but I realized that I could carve the trees and I'll probably post some other stuff about my thinking and so I uh, talked to a guy that I know, a friend of mine named Jeff Hengst, who is H-E-N-G-S-T. He's internationally known as a large format erotic painter, and we struck a deal for him to carve the trees. In figuring out what to carve, I had to think about what is it that I like? And if I'm going to create art, I have to have something that I want to look at. In thinking about what I like, I like science fiction and to a lesser extent I like fantasy. If I were to do hard science fiction that would imply spaceships or rockets or something and wood as a medium is not a good idea for that so I decided to go more with a fantasy theme which actually matches the woody tone of the house. It's a craftsman house and there's a lot of natural wood in the house. So that led me to figuring out, well, first, what is it that I don't want? I actually made a list. I don't want sea captains. I don't want bears. I don't want seagulls. I don't want pirates. I don't want any of that chainsaw crap that you see on the side of the road that's made in about half an hour that everybody has. If everybody has it, there's no reason for me to have it. And I don't like that stuff. I wanted to do something that I liked. So let me give you a tour and show you what it is that I like. Doing still photographs of the dragon and his owner playing doesn't usually do justice to them. So I'm going to do a walk around so you can see all of the details. You can see in the dragon's pose that he's kind of kneeling with his head up like a little puppy dog and the owner has him on a leash. The dragon is very happy to be playing with his owner and interestingly from an artistic perspective the fact that he's a big scary beast well but he's got a nice smile the, even though he's a beast she has him on a leash and the fact that she's naked actually gives her more power in this tableau here we have the minotaur playing ring around the posy with two little forest nymph girls the Minotaur has had just a little bit of water damage on his arm, but you can see how he's strong and muscular, but you can also see how his arm is thrown up as they spin, and you can see the outreached arms between the two, and then you can see the two 
forest girls or little forest nymphs are arm in arm with the other one having her arm thrown up in the air as they dance, playing ring around the posy. These are the travelers. The first is a cyclops girl, warrior girl. She has a staff. She's coming home from a long trip. You can see that she's headed into the house. And then secondly, we have her traveling companion, a human-cat hybrid, hence the six breasts. And if we look all the way down at the human-cat hybrid's feet, we can see her traveling companion, which is a little pussy cat. And I'm gonna walk around the back. You'll be able to see her tail. And, whoa, before I fall off my retaining wall, the lovely mane of hair that she has, the backside of the warrior girl. And because she's a cyclops girl, obviously you can see that she has only one eye and one breast. Landed on the chimney pot of the house is a fairy. You can see how she's put one foot down and she's holding around it. And then you can see how what she's doing is looking down and she's actually looking at the Minotaur and the forest nymph girls playing ring around the posy, but she's come to watch the proceedings. Here's a close up of the fairy on the roof. I'm actually going to walk fairly slowly and carefully because I'm not one of those photographers who is willing to risk their life to get the shot. Very few people get to come up on my roof, so this is a great view of her. While it's awesome that you can see the entire sculpture garden from the street, here's the view from the porch. You can actually see the travelers, and then over here you can see the Minotaur um, doing the ring around the posy with the girls, and then off in the distance you can see the dragon playing with his owner. So I think this is actually probably the best possible view of all of the sculptures. Hopefully you've enjoyed this introduction to the art of the Dragon House.